Welcome back everyone to the Hello World Guy and this is the start of our new series on uh, making well, another game and in this one we are actually going to make a game without writing a single line of code using Unity's built-in visual sp uh, scripting system. This is not Bolt. Uh, I don't know if it's actually made from Bolt or something but it's integrated in Unity. You do not have to download another uh, asset. It is present in the version I'm using which is 2022.1.6. Uh, it should be present in most versions, in recent versions. Just, you know, you can, uh, if it's not, just upgrade your Unity version. Alright, uh, the game we are going to create is going to be a really simple 2D, uh, you know, side scroller with um, just an infinite runner. Not going to be anything complicated, just uh, going to be like um, uh, jumping over stuff and like that. So it's going to be really simple. So uh, I'm going to select 2D here for my um, uh, template. And then uh, I'm going to, for the project name, I'm going to say um, uh, visual scripting runner uh, all right like that and let's go ahead and create, uh, hit create project all right so the first thing that we need to do is set up visual scripting in our project and before uh, older versions you had to go under window and package manager and install a package called vault but now it's all built in into unity uh, the latest version at least and go under edit and project settings and in here find visual scripting open that up and hit this initialize visual scripting button and it should start initializing the visual scripting it's not going to take that long all right so once it has done this you can see that well we have got everything here and uh, mm, yeah this is pretty much it so you can just close this window here and you have got a new folder but that's not what we need what we can do is right click in here and create a new folder here called graph this is going to represent all of our visual scripting graphs and i'm going to right click here go ahead and create go under visual scripting and choose a script graph not a state graph a script graph just call it something like player this is going to be our player and that's nice and I you can just go what you can do is right click in the scene and create a new 2d right square here call it player all right and uh, what's that red thing here oh. okay so uh, what you can do is uh, you can go under uh, uh, here and move it to the center of the screen just gonna do that and then make it something like a bit of a bluish color uh, yeah that that looks nice okay so once you have done that what you can do is uh, actually make change the main camera a bit just going to make it gray uh, like that okay so once uh, everything is set up what we can do is we can double click on this graph to open the script graph you can dock it somewhere here or you can dock it beside your game view now once, I'm, once we are editing the graph, I actually have to, uh, you know, click this full screen button, just press shift a, uh, space to open the graph in full screen. Now in here, uh, if I go in here, you can see that if I write, I, I can actually move around by uh, pressing my mouse button. You will see that a bit better once we add some notes. I can zoom using scroll and I can add new stuff using right click. First of all, you can add in a title and summary here. You can add player by the title and for the summary, you can say handles um handles all layer functionality and uh, this is the graph inspector by the way and this is the blackboard you can have these uh, all side by side or you can move this to here or you if you want to move to that and this in here what i can do i can right click and i can add in functions you can see that we have got a bunch of stuff here we've got a formula we can add these and you can see we have got variables, time, and we have got nulls and testing, and we have got a bunch of categories here. Now you can go to the events category, and here you can see there are a bunch of events. Now in here you can see uh, that if I go under, uh, in here if I actually go under, see there are a bunch of categories here, I can never remember the correct one, but go under life cycle, you can see we have got an on start method here. And this is just like the start method in scripting, it's going to be really easy to uh, do this. And uh, oh, by the way, you can't scroll using this. You can to scroll. I'm not sure how to scroll actually. And uh, once you are here, uh, we have got our own start here. And I can you can see that we have got this. We can I can drag out, and I can drag it out into another node. And I can say something like I can just search here for debug dot, uh, and I can literally say debug dot log. And you can see that it gets it. So of course you you might want to just go under uh, code base and then Unity engine and there are a bunch of things oh by the way you, if you go and record this then you can find all of your uh, name spaces in here and you can go to system and boolean and you can use these objects and you can use all of the functions that you could use in c sharp 
Okay, so now what I can do is I can search for debug and debug log. You can see it's there, and I can add this function here. Mm, and you can see that uh, there is the option for message here. I can't sadly if that's a uh, that's a worst thing about this, uh, which I don't like, is that you can't put literals directly in here. But uh, you you what you can do if you want to put a message, you can drag this out and say a string literal. Uh, not really. If you do that, you get string literal automatically. You can just put this here, string literal. And in here, you can put a string like hello world. Alright, so now to actually add this script to an object, what you can do is you can uh, select the whatever object you want. You can try to drag the script on it. I'm not sure if that will work. No, that will not work. Uh, go under here, add a component and visual scripting and add in a script machine here. Now, as you do that, drag this graph here and you can see it says player, handles all player functionality source is a graph and uh, oh by the way you can change this to an embed if you want uh, actually that is better for some player uh, something you might want to just say a uh, graph and you can hit edit graph and that handles it everything directly uh, but you can also use graph assets if you want up to you uh, it, it, uh, you can do whatever you like <laughs> no way stopping uh, actually I think we are just going to uh, stick with the assets for now because that's uh, a bit better you know more organized so I'm going to just switch to an asset and drag the player in here. Alright, so once I do that, I can go under my game and I can try playing the game and what you should see is that it says hello world down here in the console. So as soon as the game starts, it should say hello world. Let's see, and it starts and you can see that we get our hello world message here. And yeah, that's really nice. So this is working and we can now start to add some actual game functionality to our game. Right, so in order to get started, first of all, I'm going to select my player and add in a rigid body to the component. Once you, I have done that, I'm also going to add in a box collider 2D. Uh, 2D. And alright, with that done, I'm also going to add in a uh, another square here called ground. I'm going to change its color to be green, dark. And then I'm going to increase its scale on the Y, uh, not the Y. On the x, uh, a little bit on the y and most on the x axis, and then I'm going to decrease its position on the y a little bit. Uh, doesn't seem to work. Uh, okay, this is rotation. I'll okay, decrease its position on the y just a little bit, and that looks nice. And in here, what we can do is uh, uh, we can move it a little bit further, uh, a little more. And then I can increase it scale a bit. All right. So with that done, what I can do is add in a box collider 2D to this as well. After doing that, we can go under our script graph and uh, graphs, and here I can delete this. And what I can do, I can right click here, and you can see we've got a bunch of stuff here. Mm, I can add uh, um, a lot of functions, but what I'm going to do is add in an update method. That's going to search for update, oh, and you can see we get on update here. Just add that. And you can also go under, you know, event slash, uh, uh, not graph, uh, event slash life cycle, and then you can select on update. Uh, you can actually add two of them, <laughs> even though you shouldn't do that. Okay, so uh, in here, what we are going to do is that we are going to say, uh, oh, by the way, you can use control to zoom out, but you cannot zoom more than one uh, time. Okay, so uh, I can mm, add uh, a... Well, I, I want to check if the if the spacebar key is being held down. So how can we check that? For that, if I go under control, you can see we've got an if statement here, and also switch on string, integer, flow, and a bunch of other uh, everything that you had in C sharp, all nice try catch, throw, uh, all of those stuff. So go under here, add in an if statement. Now this takes a uh, an argument of type boolean. This pink one represents boolean, and you can see that now it also shows you in the graph inspector. Condition is missing, it's giving you a warning as well. And enter is the flow. And this flow variable just represents you know where the code flows. And it should all be familiar if you have ever used blueprints or something of that sort. But if in case it's not, I'm just going to explain it very detailed. Alright, so what I'm going to do is uh, we don't want to have anything down the fault line. We are, uh, for the uh, this, I'm, I can go here and I can say input, uh, I can say get key down. Uh, and you can also add nice spaces in between if you want. Anyways, for this I can give it a key or a name. We are going to use the key one uh, because you know. Remember, uh, oh by the way, this is uh, you can. It's, I kind of uh, keep thinking it's like blueprint where uh, some variables do not need to have be hooked to, uh, to the flow, but 
you need that I guess uh, anyways and if I add this okay so what we are going to do is we are going to call this and then we are going to check it uh, you can't have it like not connected for the key though I can uh, go here and choose the key I like no need to write anything just nice in the menu here and in here what I'm going to do is find the uh, key that is uh, well space so F uh, space okay after you have done that you can see that the key is set and we are get we have an if statement here with this done what we can do is we can go ahead here and you can we can use the get component method and we can provide it with a type of rigid body 2d just type rigid body and you should find rigid body 2d okay and we can just use component dot get component i by the way make sure it's the component method not the actual uh you know Mm, uh, game object method because this is a component and in here what we can do is we can say uh, we've got mm, this here and I can go ahead and say set velocity and once I do that you can see we've got rigid body, uh, rigid body 2d method here just select that and drag this reference here that we just get to the rigid body reference uh, you know we've got here you can see this is the rigid body icon this is the reference and this is the flow and this is the, this is the actual new velocity for this new velocity, uh, I can just say something like, uh, give me a second, I can just say something like 10 here. And what I can do is again that it, uh, well, it's not going to be needed to compile. And once I hit play, what you should see is that our player falls down. And just wait for this while, let it fall down. Okay, and I can press space and it jumps up. And currently, uh, there's no ground checking, and you can see that it is too high. Uh, so yeah, we can, we need to reduce that. Now of course we want to uh, be able to you know initialize our uh, set our jump velocity and stuff inside of the inspector. Uh, even so we can do it in the graph. It doesn't take any time to compile or anything. But I think it will be better if we just used uh, you know in the inspector. So how can we do that? Well, uh, this data input thing is not what you should be using it for something else. Uh, in here, what you can do is uh, you can add go here and add in a set velocity. Uh, rigid body to uh, not a set of okay. okay. <laughs> but you can go ahead and say create vector 2 here and create vector 2 will create a vector 2 and what you can do is you can drag this here and this and uh, what you can do here is you can uh, for the y component you can use uh, go under here and if you go under variables uh, the variables category down here you can see that we have got object here and you can see use get object variable and for this, uh, you can uh, give it. Uh, you can also go here and select other game object stuff. Uh, you can go under here, go under player, and game object. Game object literal, not really that long, but we want. Anyway, this should work. Uh, and for the name of the game object, we are going to say jump velocity because that's going to be the name of the object. Now this will throw a null reference uh, exception if it doesn't exist. And in here, what you can do is you can add in a new variable by setting a name. Then hitting this plus sign. For the type, select like something like a float, and then you can put 5 as a value. Now, once I go inside here and I can hit play, what you should see is that everything works magically. Uh, and I, if I hit, uh, uh, if I just hit space, then I can jump. And it's a lot lower. So, um, you can, and you can of course change it inside an inspector as much as you want. You can, uh, okay, not that. Okay, uh, you can change it to something like 7. Uh, I think that actually the perfect value for us. So let's just test it out. So now it's going to be really easy to change stuff and test it out and everything else. Uh, so this is the way that you would. It, there's no serial life field or anything of that sort. Uh, so yeah, you can see that I can jump and that's really nice. So now we have got a pretty much complete jumping system and I gave you a short uh, implementation of uh, a short introduction of this uh, graph system. So I think that this is pretty much it for this video and I will see you in the next video where we will actually start making our game because now you should have a hang of this you can just play around with this try to add features like ground checking we are going to do that in the next video but please you can implement ground checking yourself make sure to comment who actually managed to create ground checking uh, because uh, we have discussed in previous tutorials there are many guides online you can uh, try to implement the c sharp code inside of the graph so yeah i will see you in the next video and make sure to like and subscribe and uh, check out my other devils channel and bye